is up you two? This is about here back in today with you guys in a new speed duel mash duel video and I know many of you guys have been asking me to do this for a while and I'm finally finally decided to finally get you guys this speed duel match right here and playing the deck that you guys always wanted and we're playing the fortress whale deck right here and I decided to challenge myself a little bit and really do some extra play testing today to sort of see how far we can actually go with this deck so we actually challenge against one of the top tier decks currently in the format which is conflict warrior so we're just gonna go right into it and see how we duel but you know right here we want the stone paper scissors so we do definitely want to go second uh, most of the time I know some of you guys seen this deck already or try to build this deck for your own so keep in mind this deck is really just for casual just for fun um, I gotta say it's a huge leap to be actually facing against this type of deck it's uh, th this opponent's deck right here because it is definitely very very challenging so just so you guys know we're going to be using Ritual Ceremony uh, with Emma, the skill, which basically essentially is your Ritual Spell Searcher, which gets it very quickly to your hand, really fast, still very, very good skill uh, at the end of the day. And yes, for you guys who do want to see the deck profile, don't worry, it will be posted a few days shortly after this video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Anyways, they set up their monsters with their back rows and they pass their turn immediately. We got a decent hand, you know, we can bring out Fortress well, quick and easy enough. You know, the basic combo is to use Senju, Senju grab Fortress Whale, and then immediately use Emma with Ritual Ceremony as soon as you can. You always want to use this skill very, very quickly. So this deck is very good in the early game, I have to say. And so we do review our Fortress Whale, grabbing our Advanced Ritual Art. Now keep in mind that uh, this the reason why I finally decided to use this uh, play this deck is because with the addition of Advanced Ritual Art which from the new starter decks, which really, really, really boosts it up the speed uh, which to the point where I'm very confident and I feel like this deck could work quite well in consistency and actually works really really well in consistency honestly. I would just say because uh, Fortress Whale is just a little bit not as strong as uh, compared to all the other boss monsters in the current uh, game but that's okay. Uh, we grab our Advanced Ritual Art, which uh, Ritual Ceremony does allow us because it, it doesn't say uh, add one Ritual Spell that specifically lists that monster's name. It just says add one Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand that can Ritual Summon that monster. Advanced Ritual Art can definitely can do that. So you guys can see um, the whole combo right here because now we're going to be playing the Red Eyes combo. And with Advanced Ritual Art, we can immediately pitch the Red Eyes from our deck. I accidentally added to my hand right here, but you guys can also see it's kind of unfortunate. We got kind of a bad draw because we've got two red eyes black dragons on our hand and really with advanced ritual art we never really want to draw into these it becomes a dead draw uh which is really unfortunate and we can't utilize advanced ritual art because of that we can use the normal uh ritual spell for fortress well to sort of bring it out but um you know it's always more preferable to have them in the deck anyways you guys can see how quickly we bring out fortress well but unfortunately an offering to the doom makes us go away already uh, all that hard work and gone, but that's okay. We're gonna swing in for attack and see what we have. They have a command knight and they have Zoma as well. Uh, I mean, the situation doesn't just look great on our end, anyways. Uh, they accidentally drew a card because they shouldn't be because they used the uh, offering to the doom. But anyways, uh, they summon their guy, the fierce knight. You know, just start beating us down right here, straight up. And you know, command knight with 1600, we take 200 right here. They're gonna beat us down right here with 19, and command knight gives them the extra 400. So they're basically back at 23. Boof, and then Zoma here ends the game right out. So very easily just one shot us uh, here. So for side deck, I know some of you guys want to see side deck. We still definitely sided some uh, pretty interesting cards uh, in here into this uh, deck to sort of uh, contest against this matchup. I'll let you guys if, uh, if we do run into any. But if you guys want to see the full deck profile once again, be sure to stay tuned for that in a few days shortly because we will be showcasing the deck profile to you guys regardless anyways. And yeah, let's go straight into match uh, the second duel and see if we can score ourselves a win right here. So this time we do definitely, as usual, want them to go first. We want that extra card, that extra draw power. The cards on our hand seems to be all right. We don't see any Sanjus or Fortress Wells, which is not the best and greatest uh, for the start as well. But we do quickly uh, top deck one right here. So we're going to go with Sonic Bird first, uh, grab ourselves Advanced Ritual Art, flip up a Ritual Ceremony anyways. Always use it as soon as you can. There's no reason not to, there's no reason to wait for this skill ever. Uh, and basically grab ourselves the Fortress Whales. Oh, and we don't see any red eyes this time, so it's definitely much better. So we're gonna go for our advanced ritual art, pitching our red eyes. Basic combo, that's why we play Red Eye Spirit as well, so we can bring back our uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon later on. And basically set our back rows and go for an attack. They got an empty field right here. So they do play Dust Tornado, popping our Dust Tornado, which is unfortunate. 
but that's okay. We're gonna go here for more extra damage right here, and we do go through with that, which is very, very, very nice. We're very close to getting the win, you know. Maybe if Sonic Bird had a little bit more attack, it would be a potential OTK. Or maybe if Fortress World just had a little bit higher attack. But, you know, it's a fan favorite classic card, so can't, you can't expect too much from it. But you guys can see Inner Conflict right here, uh, stealing our uh, Fortress Whale, tributing it, and already they have a simple way to out our resource. You guys can really see what a top tier deck really means when an opponent plays against um, us like this. Especially if we're using a casual deck, once again guys, keep in mind. That really differentiates the level. but. Once again, I wanted to challenge myself and see how far I can take it, and honestly, you'd be a little bit surprised of how, how far this deck can actually go. Uh, anyways, um, they swing in with Gap, the Vine Soldier, destroying our Sonic Bird, passing now to our turn. We do play Eliminating in League. I kind of don't remember if I play this in the main deck or side deck at, uh, at the moment of recording this video, but um, I think I do play one in the main. Since we have so many spells, mine as well, you know, you know our spells are not always useful. We have like two... Fortress Whale's Oath right here, which we don't necessarily always need to play and need to keep them in our hand. Uh, so we do play Eliminating League for that reason. But anyways, right here we are able to flip back up and have a Red Eyes right here and potentially even swing in for game. Uh, setting our Eliminating League and go for it right here and once again offering to the Doom, you know, best card in the current meta, one of the best cards in the current meta, which really, really um, unfortunately takes us down from that. Anyways, uh, we, they summon the Gear Freed Iron Knight, passing back to them, and they're going to start swinging in right here, and we're going to play Eliminating the League, comes in handy, we do pop their gap right here, so we're able to survive for one more turn and see what we can do next right here. So we draw into Senju, great, we can search, uh, but we can't bring anything out. Which is kind of unfortunate. We got nothing. We need one extra card, and then it would potentially be great for us. We're gonna set here for a bluff, I suppose, um, and see what they do. But honestly, I think they know. They can most likely know. Guess it's a bluff already, because you know, if, if that was a card, we'd have said it like a little while ago, maybe. But anyways, they're still gonna swing in no matter what. So we do take that 400, and they pass back to us. And then we have a Red Eye Spirit once again. This card is just really great once you have Red Eyes in your graveyard, honestly. So that they do bring out Zoma right here. The game gets tighter and tighter because we're just so, so, so close. 125 life points away. Man, situation does not look good once again. They got three monsters on the board. But anyways, they swing in. And of course, we're going to have Red Eye Spirit right here. And we can counterplay like this by essentially... Um, putting, uh, we want, we're thinking whether to put in defense or attack, but we'll put it straight in attack anyways, right here, and pressure them right here, because they have nothing that can go over us, uh, Gear Freed is at 22, and, you know, it's 200 short against Red Eyes Black, uh, Dragon, and essentially, they could swing in with Zoma, but they can't, because they'll be taking the damage, here, here's the, basically what the rule works, if they swing in with Zoma here, they take their da battle damage first, which concludes them to losing the game before, uh, we do take uh, the 2400 from Zoma's effect, essentially. So that's similar to like the Relinquish ruling, I believe. So I don't think they can tie the game here or anything. But um, yeah, if they do swing in here, they're not going to win, basically, essentially. So back to us. Great. Next turn, we're good to go. We even have offerings right here. We're going to set that just in case. And we're going to go straight into the command knife. But we realize we can't. We're going to go. We can only go for Gear Freed. We can't attack. Um, Command Knight because of its effect, so we can choose Zoma or uh, Gear Freak, so we'll just take out Gear Freak, and they have a Nightmare Wheel, damn, man, this is so close, we're so close, so close getting to it, uh, anyways, uh, passing to them, they set their turn, and they're just gonna play defense from here, because they're gonna just wait for us to burn out right here, I guess, I suppose, um, so, 500 life points left, wow, a top deck of Dust Tornado, okay, we can still do this, we're gonna set that and pass, and we're gonna grind through this all the way to the end. And we do pop that Dust Tornado in the standby phase, uh, or, or yeah, basically, essentially, just before the effect activates, um, so that uh, we don't take that 500 right here. So we're free from that, and then we play Sonic Bird as well, and then see what our options are. We do have options right here. We can still potentially turn it around. Sonic Bird still allows us to switch events with your art, so we can still bring out. Our other Fortress Whale. You guys can see how consistent and how great Events Ritual are is Instant Fortress Whale. So right here, we're able to turn the tide back to three monsters against three, and then we can potentially even go for a game actually. So I'm gonna tag into their monsters. We're gonna offerings away the Zoma the Spirit right here, and uh, so that you know we don't want to attack into it because we'll be taking a damage and then we'll lose. Uh, and then we're gonna try swinging for final game right here, and unfortunately. 
they do have another Zoma the Spirit, which is really, really unfortunate right here. And I guess um, it depends if they want to go for this final blow or not. And they do have another guy of the Fierce Knight, um, which is at 1900, but they can easily just swing in here for game with uh, guy of the Fierce Knight. And we do take that perfect 500 life points, unfortunately. Losing game two, and it turns out that, yeah, we only had, like, uh, the other Ritual Spell to summon out uh, for as well. So, that basically concludes the match duel here today. Um, I know, unfortunately, we did lose two games, both of them, uh, in here, and it's really unfortunate that we couldn't win one, but I tried really, really hard, really grindy, we're really, really, really close, and once again, uh, you know, just so you guys know, we can't win it all. Like, not all decks that we play on the channel is always like the best decks ever. You know, I want to showcase you guys different, different decks. Um, but yeah, today's a special one because um, just keep in mind once again, Fortress Well is really just a fu for fun deck. Uh, just so you guys know. And it's not, and it's very, very difficult to compete against a tier one deck. But I'm pretty proud of it. Honestly, uh, despite how we played and we're able to sort of grind this through all the way to this point and we're just really, really close. Uh, but I still hope you guys enjoy the speed duel match uh, right here. And I know many of you guys do want to see the deck profile regardless, uh, no matter the result of how, how, how this deck plays out. You know, this deck can go pretty well against other casual decks as well, just so you guys know. So yeah, the deck profile video will be featured in a few days shortly, so be sure to stay tuned for that, Sub subscribe to the Evolve channel, click that notification bell, and so you guys don't miss out. And yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are, we'll see you in the next video, and this is Evolve, signing out.